Hey everyone, Duke Nougat 3D here. And oh, hello. And that guy. And today we're going to be taking a look at a mask that I'm sure a lot of you people talk about. I see a lot of people talking about these. I don't really know why because they're god awful. But today we're going to be taking a look at a cool and epic abomination before God, the XM28 E4 riot control mask. And um you have any, any input or should we wait till the physical review? Because I, uh, I feel like this is outside of your forte. I'm kinda... No, no, a little bit. I mean, it's, it's again, MSA basically getting a bunch of blueprints that completely suck and somehow still managing to manufacture it. Um, even though each component taken individually is garbage, uh, assembled somehow it actually still functions as a mask and seals. Um, and it's very lightweight. It is very lightweight, and the whole purpose behind that was sometime in the mid-1960s, the 1st Cavalry Division requested a lighter weight field protective mask to replace their ABC M17 protective masks, which were too bulky and offered way too much protection for when they were flushing out Viet Cong in the tunnels. And so the development began with what what ultimately boiled down to the XM27 and the XM28 series here. Now, the XM27 was essentially just a normal M17, which was either made out of transparent or green silicone rubber, and it did not have lens crimps, and occasionally it would have C11 harnesses, or C15 harnesses, like you see on the tank masks, but that's a that's entirely... Um, I can't really follow the patterns on that. It's not a, a thing that was frequently documented, but anywho... There's um, a few of those kicking around. If you want to take a look at one, I know Lehigh, Fal Lehigh Valley Fallout is his Instagram. Yeah. He has one. He's probably posted it there. If not, um, well, too bad. Sucks for you. Um, you can go ahead and check out the Gas Mask Wiki. I've posted the, his photos on the XM27 article if you want to take a look at those. But this isn't about that. This is about the XM28. Now, the key feature about the XM28 was, A, obviously not being an M17. It is much lighter in weight. And, B, I think I already said B, um, to begin with. <laughs> I could be wrong, but it, it can, the weird thing about this thing, and it's kind of its Achilles heel as well, is that the mask can completely fold inwards on itself and fit in a very small watertight carrier. And um, really not much else to be said about that. They were introduced around 1968 or so, and they were put out of service around 1975. And a lot of people will draw the comparison of the M22 civilian defense mask in, in comparison to this, and I do know where you're getting some of that, and that's sort of where army development was going for most of the late 50s, early 60s, is just these weird... Just make make shit cheap. Just just make a trowel that you wear on your face, is yeah. basically what it all boiled down to, but getting a look at the external, um, obviously it's made out of a green silicone, uh, it's really not much to say about that. The head harness is complete and utter ass, as I've mentioned before, not in this review, but just in general to moulage here, um, which is... Definitely much thinner than the standard 7 8 inch action elastic that they use on mask head harnesses, and there's just a bit of webbing for the head pad. It's literally, this could be like on a uh, 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 load-bearing vest or something, this little piece of webbing here. It's it's not substantial. Pretty much. It's I, I'm not a fan of this design in general. There's a lot that I don't like, but there's also a couple things I do, just mainly it's just the novelty of the design, really. Like the foam shoved under the... Oh, yes. Uh, there's a weird trend with U.S. development in that they put a lot of emphasis on getting the mask to pressurize against the cavernous regions of the temples. And one such way that they've done it here is they've literally just glued foam to the mask underneath the temple strap so that the depression caused by the tension of the head harness would cause this strap to compress the face piece into the temples. And it is quite a weird feature. Um, I know there's a couple other principles which U.S. development has followed in which that sort of does the same purpose, it, but it's kind of unnecessary. It bears similarity to the uh, the medical M9s where they would take a strip of hot harness webbing, roll it up, and sh shove it under a strap run along here to fill in cavities. Basically, mm -hmm. the U.S. finds a cavity, they find a piece of foam or webbing, you shove it in there, and suddenly everything's better. So... I know a lot of things are better when you shove foam in them, but that's a different story. Oh, good Lord. <laughs> so, getting on to the external, the, uh, the rest of the externals, there's not much else to see. It follows a lot of the M17 sort of design logic in which it has bilateral, bi bilaterally, uh, integrally mounted cheek filtering elements, which I'm not entirely sure on the designation. I'm sure it mentions it in here, which is this manual that I mean, you've probably all been ogling at this point. I believe that came from uh, Bart Wilkes' collection, did it not? Uh, fuck, man, it was years ago. <laughs> I can't quite fucking remember. Just keep, keep talking. I'm looking it up. All right. Uh, well, he's doing that. Not much else to say about the externals. I'll show off the intricacies of the markings because I, I do not like this head and I don't like moving it around. 
So looking at the, um, the, the manufacturer's stamp, if it'll focus on that, you can see that this one was manufactured in 1969, which is a nice year, and made by MSA, obviously Mine Safety Appliances. And on the bottom, you have a C15 style exhalation valve, which uh, has a different shroud than the normal ones because of, you know, high speed, low drag and whatnot. Um, but underneath this silicone rubber shroud, it is literally just a normal C15 valve, nothing to gawk at. Um, and I presume this would be a good place to move on to, to the internals because this is where most of the faults of the mask tend to fall in. Because externally, it looks like a very competent design, and it is very sleek and lightweight feeling, but inside it is kind of a utter dumpster fire. Because to, in order to allow the mask to be completely folded up and stowed in the carrier, you have what is essentially a sheet rubber butchered mess of a nose cup, which has only been semi-molded in a few specific places so that it could be folded inwards, and, you know, it has a profile to it, but... Other, otherwise, it's literally just a big sheet that's been tacked into the face piece with various studs and rivets and buttons and whatnot. Bad news. What's that? Filter element, riot control mask. That's, that, all, that's all you get. Oh, cool. So, officially, I, I guess that's all we have. There, there is no designation maybe other than XM28 filtering elements. Or uh, uh, D5-3-943. That's probably a contract number, in all uh, honesty. Yeah, it's a reference number and manufacturer code. More weird features about this mask, while I'm probably butchering the camera angles because I cannot see what I'm doing, is this chin rest inside here. It does not actually have a chin cup, but literally a little up. Yeah, so it has a little bit of a chin rest right there instead of like a normal molded in chin cup. And that is to allow the mask obviously to fold inwards on itself and not really don't have too many molded peripherals to collapse in inwards on itself. But here you can see an exploded view of the mask in all of its horrendous glory. And you can see the very odd... Po uh, polygonal, polygonal, I don't know, po polygonal shape of the filtering elements. Mormon. Mormon. The Mormon shape of the filtering elements. And uh, and you can get a very brief glimpse of them if I pry some crap back inside of here. And you can just barely, if you can, if the camera will focus, you can just barely see them underneath that plastic spacer. And that is probably the worst part of this mask in general, is this plastic spacer Inside the mask, which I'm sure you've already noticed, is broken, and I have yet to see an example where one is not broken. They are just consistently damaged like this, and aside from just general structural integrity, I'm not really sure why that's added. It doesn't. It seems like the mask would be able to hold itself on its own. Maybe it's preventing the mask from covering up the outlet valve, because I've actually put this on, and it is a very difficult mask to breathe through because of the outlet valve breathing resistance, um, so that is a bit unfortunate. And uh, before I show off the folding action, which I'm not going to do all the way, but you can get a good look at how the lenses are glued inside the face piece. And as far as I know, these are not flexible. So that's probably why these fail so much is because when these are folded into the carriers, the lenses get crushed in on themselves and they pop out and the, the adhesive breaks. Yeah, so. so be careful when you do that. So obviously, I'm not going to do it all the way, obviously, because it's, it's a very tedious and dangerous process for these older masks. But uh, how you would do it is you would essentially just stretch it out and then press the center inwards and then fold it in like that. Just make a taco out of it. And even then, you'd have to fold in this bit of stuff, too, to get it to sit in the carrier. Um, and you can see the general profile of how the filters would be shaped inside there. Uh, there are some markings right here. 428, and I'm not sure if that's an issue number or what that is, but that's present on there. So, interesting to note, I guess. And the size is usually indicated on the chin piece, unlike on most U.S. masks, it's usually indicated on the forehead. And you can see this one is a size medium. Um, I know smalls and larges are quite rare. I know there's another collector in the GMCC who has a size large, but again, it's more common to find mediums. I haven't really seen any other sizes other than that, but essentially that's about it. And I'm sorry if I kind of dominated this review, if you had more things to say, Mulash. Uh, no, not particularly, except uh, apparently these did see some minor success among helicopter pilots and other shit. Because you'll see weird variants where there's like a big black plastic thing here and there's no straps and it just clips onto the sides of the helmet like an oxygen mask. So it's one of those weird masks, that kind of like the M45 turned out to be, where there's very specific times where it works very well. And the rest of the time, unlike the M45, it's kind of like, what are you doing here? What the fuck is going on? Pretty much. I know a lot of people obsess about this design for whatever reason. It is a very peculiar design, a very interesting one, but ultimately it's just kind of the sequestered to just the weird mistakes of development history of fulfilling a problem that really didn't need to be solved in the first place because that's what you get when you fight proxy wars. 
So that being said, that's really all I have to say on it. If you have anything else, I'm pretty sure you've covered most uh, of the yeah, bases. Yeah, I'm gonna gonna say one last time. Of course. Uh, yeah, I think that MSA, well, maybe a Kushnet. I think that MSA and a Kushnet are like the only two manufacturers that could have pulled this piece of shit off. Um, Scott, if they tried to do this, um, ew, that'd be bad. <laughs> It would be bad, but the worst part is if Scott designed this thing, it would be used much longer. Because anything that Scott designs just stays in service forever. Oh, yeah. It's almost like they bribe people to keep their shit in service longer. Pretty much. But that's about the gist of things. That's all we have to say. If there's anything we missed, feel free to fill in in the comments, which I know some of you will do. Or just pretty much comment anything, because that's kind of the norm of my comments these days. Just don't... Look, do me a favor. Don't leave comments at all. Okay? <laughs> just no... Just if you have feelings, think about them, and then don't say anything. Just, what he said. Just take it easy, man. It's Christmas. Be nice to yourself. If you have any comments, questions, corrections, or concerns, I guess you can't drop them down in the comments because Mueller said not to. I'm Duke New with 3D, and I'll see you all later.